Hello, and in this recording, we are going to be talking about building habits. I am trying to build up several new habits, including using new technologies to be more productive. So I guess you could say we're also talking about productivity and getting the most out of your time. Now, I've been writing fiction books, fantasy stories and science fiction for quite a while, but it takes me a very, very long time to draft through them, to edit them. Then there's the issue of even if you have the book finished, then how do you get people to actually buy your book, which goes into the whole marketing issue, which I realize that I need a significant amount of help with because I have, to put it very politely, I have less than your average number of social connections. And you might be able to tell just from the way that I talk, because I haven't absorbed the common parlance of the day, that there's there's something off about this guy. He doesn't talk like the other people. You talk funny over there, don't you? It's like... um yeah, if you're not constantly surrounded by a certain group of people that talk in a certain way, then you're going to eventually develop a divergent dialect. And if you spend, and that's one thing as uh, someone who writes a ridiculous amount, like for several years, I had written collectively, I had written more words than I had spoken just because of how often I would write and how relatively little I would just engage in socialization for socialization's sake. The point on that is this is a really odd situation where I have a lot of public speaking experience of professionally speaking, but not so much in terms of private socialization. Uh, just saying the way that I speak because of my experiences has developed into a unique voice. And part of that development of having a unique voice as a writer comes from writing so much. If you want to get good at writing, just write a whole lot. I believed in that. I, it, it teaches you technique, but you're not going to make money off of stuff that isn't published. And that's why I put forth a fair amount of money into a program for marketing and publishing. I bring that up because as part of this marketing and publishing thing, you have to think of, well, what is your brand? How do you brand you as a writer? What's your shtick? What's your stick there, guy? So what do you want to be known for? And uh, I do have a handful of, eh, more. it's not even drafts. It was like rough outlines of different concepts I wanted to convey in terms of language learning. I can talk about language acquisition, language learning, and educational techniques on end for a really long time. And I have a much higher rate of production in terms of words per minute and in terms of being able to edit things and being able to rearrange matters around because in a fiction story you have you need to follow a timeline basically you need, you need to make the events happen in an order that makes sense when you have content for nonfiction when you have content for explaining what are the processes of education in learning a foreign language with a significantly different writing system like Japanese then the different parts of that book which you don't have to follow a timeline you just have to follow a logical organization of groups of ideas so that you present the simpler ideas uh, at the beginning, and then you build up to more complex ideas later on. So with marketing, you have to figure out what's your brand. And I figured what, what I can talk about for a great deal on end, which I can create so much content from, is education, language acquisition, becoming a polyglot effectively. And that's where, that's the real heart of this uh, conversation here, is how do you effectively learn a language? I'm not going to go into that so much here, but this is more of a, a very uh, vague view of we want to be effective with our use of time. So in building up my habits for becoming a more uh, effective person, I had to realize that I'm more effective at producing books to market when I am writing about the educational material for language acquisition. I need to get that out of the way. That's a good foot in the door of things that I can produce quickly. Uh, and I, I would have a couple of books in that line that if this first one doesn't work out well, I can try again with another. If that one doesn't work out well, I'm sure I'll be able to make a third book. So I want to share a quick thing. When I decided on just before the weekend, I decided, OK, I'm going to see if I have enough content off the top of my head where I can mind map a book about language acquisition using modern technology. Specifically, what are the special benefits that you would have from using VR technology? So I, as I was going over in my head, the different aspects to language acquisition, I kept coming on. Well, it, with my framing here, VR is a you know a quirky novel thing that people are interested in. 
But over and over again, I could honestly say that the technological advancements of VR would make for a greater uh, retention of knowledge because there's greater stimulation to the content that you're engaged with. There's greater engagement with the content itself that I, I could have an honest conversation about how VR improves all these different steps of the language acquisition process. So I get to talk about the language acquisition process, but I get to spice it up by talking about this technology and I get to make it more engaging by talking about engagement itself. There's a lot of meta talk when you are communicating about communication itself. So I realized that I have a greater efficacy with being able to make these nonfiction books. And I also realized after uh, doing some sessions with uh, voice to text that I am much, much faster when I am able to speak things out than I am even at the height of writing. Because I've been writing for so long, I have kept writing logs for how long was I writing for? How many words did I write in that session? And I also have uh, a couple of headings, like if this was a editing a draft, if this was a first draft, if I was doing dialogue, if I was presenting logical argument, where if I have to be like really precise with logical argumentation, that is the longest. I have about seven words per minute, uh, which that's like really, really slow, but that's because you have to be really precise when talking about something so deliberate like that. Uh, I don't think that is a very effective way to write to market. It's a very honest way. That brings up another issue is that writing logically and deliberately is very difficult. And so there aren't many things that are published that have that very precise mode of thought put into them. It takes a very long time to edit them as well. So let me go through some numbers. It's seven for the hardest, for the hardest form of like the highest form of very, very dense writing uh, for basic dialogue and banter that's going back and forth. I have about 12 words per minute for fiction. Doing things that are like scenes, I uh, it increases a little bit to about 18. Uh, if it's, you know, people are going around doing things, I'm not so worried. Uh, about dialogue. Part of the difficulty with dialogue, for me at least, is managing uh, he said or the little things that people do in between the lines of dialogue so that there's still some kind of action. Like, how do I portray that this character, the character walks to the door character walked, because I'm doing it in past tense, the character walked to the door, he put his hand up on the door, then looked over his shoulder uh, while holding it open and says something. That's a very bland way of putting it, but when, uh, so I would, I would stumble and mumble over that for a little bit of thinking, okay, how do I do this properly? So when I am writing scenes like that, I don't think that speaking out the scenes would very much help that much. I would still have to, well, I mean, I have the ability to pause these um, these voice-to-text recordings so that um, I could think through like, okay, and then you know, the words come to me of how I would describe that verbally. What I'm ultimately trying to do is I'm trying to move from writing my text to speaking my text, but I recognize that is a different skill. I do have experience with being able to explain things verbally. I've had to do that a great deal in my job as an English teacher and you know, explaining how does this grammar work or explaining, not necessarily explaining, so even just telling a story and then embellishing on it to uh, give a greater description so there's more exposure to English. Being able to think of things to talk about in English that are engaging for my students basically was my full-time job. I haven't done a math massive amount with recordings. I have done lots of voice recordings before that I gather my thoughts about one thing or another. I've done a significant amount of voice recordings with Japanese and then with English and then um, like, you know, translating things over to myself for making notes for sentences that I want to expand on, and of course, checking my pronunciation, or mentioning a sentence and then going into, like, the grammatical details that I need to look up. Like, what does this mean? Why is wa used at the end of the sentence here? I don't understand that. Like, making mental notes as I'm checking my pronunciation by repeating Japanese phrases out loud. So, doing voice recordings for the purpose of conveying information that is meant to be text is is a particular skill. Like, okay, when you do a first draft, it doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, it's going to be rough around the edges. That's why it's a rough draft. 
a great metaphor comes to mind of this, and I realize that I'm I'm nesting my ideas in one after another because I still haven't gotten to the other words per minute, which I will get up to. But this is something about having like complex monologues is that you learn to nest your ideas together like this. And this is a verbal skill of being able to connect a lot of ideas together that doesn't really translate that well into written text. I'm not sure at least if it does, unless you have that whole nest of ideas presented with some sort of preamble or some sort of table of contents. But it is a very natural way of flowing through conversation. It's a very complex skill that I wish to develop further, that I wish to not forget about the, hey, what was I talking about there? And you need to exercise that muscle. Um, And because I've been writing a lot about uh, communication and learning a foreign language, I have become even more aware of the necessity of different kinds of exercises for different kinds of communication. Being For me, being able to speak out words, to make rough drafts from them is a new skill. It's a new kind of communication that I have to learn in order to effectively get my thoughts down to paper. Well, it's digital paper, but you know what I mean. Get my thoughts down onto a Word document with my goal being uh, writing as many words per day as I can. 